Hey, what's up, guys? This is Brendan with Evoke Bike. We are back with part two with Larry Warbass. If you missed the first part, go in the show notes below and check that out first. Hope you enjoy this podcast. Thanks. That's amazing. Uh, something that Ted King was on, and of course, he's got his untapped maple brand. Um, I've been experimenting with maple syrup in a soft flask. Huge fan. It's definitely a different taste. It changes it up from the gels. I'm a big gel guy. People are like, dude, how, like, do you have a convenience store in your back pocket? I'm like, dude, I'm going on like a five hour ride and I don't want to. Yeah, I do the same. Candy. Yeah. And this. Um, oh, I like Haribo and stuff too. I smash the Haribo also. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. So when you're doing, would you say jump into that low carb that you mentioned? Is that more of like a cherry on top optimization for people? Because you're going to have cap for Christina who's going to be like, I got to go go low. You know, Larry Thompson going low carb, low carb on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday. Um, no, no, no. I would say that's, yeah, that's, I mean, you have to be pretty dialed to be getting a benefit from low carb. You know, like, okay. yeah, that would be like, um, you're already maximizing everything else in training, you know? Perfect. So if you're not training, you know, I don't know. If you're not training almost as a pro, <laughs> then like, I don't think low carb is going to do a whole lot. You know, like there's going to be a lot more to gain just from doing like good endurance rides or intensity or whatever than you are from like uh, doing low carb kind of stuff. So without beating the carbs to death, do you carb load at all before any specific type of races? Um, the thing is, I, I would say in general, I have a very high carb diet. Okay. Um, so that's one thing I've kind of learned over the last years. I don't really think you need to carb load that much. Um, so sure maybe if i was doing a classic like liege or something like that then amsel gold race i would maybe think a little bit to add a bit more but i don't think it's necessary to do those like you know giant pasta dinners or whatever but like you know anytime i have an intense day the next day i'll eat like pasta for dinner or rice or you know i'll have like quite a good portion of carbs the night before and then i have like a big bowl of oatmeal for breakfast um so you know, I would just say in general, I have a very high carb diet, you know? Cool. Um, so, so yeah. So I guess, you know, I guess the thing is, is people can, when they hear like low carb, for example, they can not whole, whole like, like understand what that is. But like, for me, that would be like for just a very small period of like one day, you know, mm -hmm. like it would be my breakfast, my ride. And then after the ride, I smash carbs, you know? So it's like, um, yeah, I would say in general, I eat a very, very high carb diet and that is the best for performance, I would say. Yeah. Phenomenal. So you're getting ready for some races. You've been training. You got a bunch of things going on. Maybe you're going out on Tuesday. You're like, I'm going to go hit a hard session. I want to feel good. I want to get a W. Do you have any intervals that you're like, I just, I'm going to tee these things up and just crush them. And when you do that, that's sort of like your little litmus, like, yeah, I'm going to rip it this weekend. Um, no, I wouldn't say actually, to be honest, like, yeah, I would say I try to do, um, yeah, I would say like in general, I would do like pretty similar kind of training. I would never do anything like super, super high intensity, like regularly, but then like leading up to the races, I would like smash the intensity and I do like, you know, a lot of like, you know, four minute, two minute kind of efforts. Um, and I hate them and they're horrible and they're like the worst things ever, but I feel like they make me a lot better. Um, and I guess I can see like if I'm doing good numbers on that, but it's more just like, I can feel like when I go out riding and I can feel like, okay, you know, how do I feel at 300 Watts? How do I feel at 400 Watts? Like, and I know like, okay, if 300 Watts feels easy, you know, if 400 Watts is like, I'm not suffering or dying, whatever, then I'm like, Oh, I'm in good shape. You know, like I can just kind of see. And then I guess the other thing is, is like uh, sometimes if, you know, so I live in Nice most of the year. And, you know, if you do efforts on climbs there, if I'm like coming close to like the KOMs or, um, you know, I can see, you know, like on Strava, like maybe I'm setting my PRs or whatever. And then like, if you're coming close to the KOMs and some of these climbs, like when you're doing efforts, it's like all the best guys in the world live right around there and they're all riding these climbs. So then you're like, okay, I got in good shape, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would say like, that's one thing. Like I'm not really a, K a, a KOM hunter. Um, I'm like, are very much not a KOM hunter, but, um, I like to see like in my training, I like to like use Strava as a gauge to see like, Oh, like, 
shit, I'm going pretty well. You know, mm-hmm. like, like if I'm, you know, not so far off either my best times or like the KOMs for like these climbs and stuff. Um, I think that's kind of nice to see. It's awesome to hear a world tour pro, like you guys do check in and just like check the leaderboard, like how am I doing? And there is a oh, lot of limits. There are there. some guys who are like all about like smashing the game. Richie Port, he's like, now he's just, I think the reason he's had like a renaissance year is because he's just been so motivated by Strava. So, so yeah. James Piccoli was on and he, I don't, I actually forgot to ask him the study, but he was talking about how he doesn't even, when he, he likes doing intervals, he doesn't do time and watt based. He chases a space and time and whether it's like, you know, he knows a certain climbs around him, it's going to be about five minutes. And he's like, dude, you're going to go deeper if you're chasing a space versus looking at your thing. Like I got to hold X watts for however long. And I think Strava is the same way. I've I just moved uh, into the Blue Ridge Mountains here. In, oh, nice. Uh, yeah, super pumped in Blowing Rock, North Carolina. So Same. I've had some days where it's like, you know, hey, go do a VO2 max effort, four to six minutes, whatever. And so I've tried to look up KOMs, link them up, yeah. figure out where they are. and be like, all right, I got this one. I got 10 minutes to the next one, five minutes to the next one. And I mean, dude, a four and a half hour ride goes by so fast when you're going for five or six KOMs. It's... Uh, yeah Strava has changed the game for sure yeah i guess let's talk about the races a bit what do you think when you look back what are the results that you're most proud of uh well i would definitely say um the most proud of is like my stage win in tour de swiss i would say for me that was like the um yeah that was definitely like a highlight of my career so far uh just like for me, that meant so much to like, I guess like that year I, I dropped from world tour to pro continental and, um, yeah, you know, I, I had just kind of had like a little bit of padlock, like, you know, my previous team had folded and yeah, I don't know. I just, um, things hadn't like gone super well for me, I guess in my career until that point. And like, um, but I always knew like I, I had, um, you know, I had like that in me, but like, yeah, it was just, it had never really clicked until, um, that day. And, and so for me, that was like really big. And also like, I mean, it was just kind of random, but like my previous two teams before that were both like kind of Swiss, you know, BMC was like American, but Swiss. Mm -hmm. And then I am was Swiss. Um, so I, I just had like a lot of, um, I spent a lot of time in Switzerland, you know, I, I don't know. I just had a lot of connection to like the place and, um, and the race. And so, yeah, for me, that was just like, yeah, it was huge. And also like, it was like the way I won and stuff was like pretty cool, like solo mountain stage, like everyone, every single team chasing full behind um, and like still holding off the Peloton. So like for me, that was like, that was pretty, pretty big. And that was, that was awesome. For me, that was like a highlight uh, of my career for sure, you know? Uh, so yeah, that was just, that was just such, yeah such an awesome day and and yeah there was so much work that went into it and i i really like yeah i I put in so much like sacrifice and stuff and uh yeah like that whole the whole winter i like i didn't really go home to the u.s like i spent christmas like by myself like in nice and all this stuff and uh so yeah when it finally and like the whole season up to that point wasn't amazing so like for all that to like all that like culminated in that win and it was just like incredible um so that was sick and then yeah obviously like when i won the national championships it was funny because it wasn't really like a big objective of mine um like i'd always been like you know i don't know i guess i just i had actually targeted the tt i thought like oh maybe i can win the tt but i'm since i'm racing alone i won't have a chance for the road race that much you know and the tt didn't go very well it was hot i really wasn't feeling very good in the heat and like i didn't have a very good ride so i was really disappointed and I was like, shit, like now I got to smash a road race, you know? <laughs> and I don't know. Like, and I just, I mean, it just really worked out. Like, um, you know, there was a break, but then the race like opened back up with like two laps to go. Uh, it was maybe like, I don't know, 20 miles to go or something. And uh, yeah. And then I don't know it all like worked out. So that was, that was awesome. Um, so I would say those are, you know, for me, those are like, those two things were incredible because I didn't realize how big, the national championships would be for like my profile as a cyclist for me that like, like the tour de Swiss win is like a much more difficult race to win. And I'm like very proud of that. 
but like for my profile as a cyclist, like the national championships, like took me up another level. Um, so that was cool. And then go uh, ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, and then I guess like in terms of like <clears throat> being proud is like last year, um, I was like top 20 in the Giro, um, on GC, which like, it's not like a bigger flashy result or anything, but it, it like really made like, it kind of was like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, I guess it kind of proved to myself, like I have what it takes to like be there, you know? Um, and I wouldn't even say like, that was, that was not my best form that I had the whole last year, but, uh, it was just nice to, to know that like, I'm capable of that. Um, yeah. So so that was that was like kind of a nice um confirmation i guess um was just like okay like it's not easy to be top 20 in a grand tour <laughs> and uh yeah so that was that was that was pretty big for me dude i'm i mean i'm nobody to tell you this take it for a grain of salt <laughs> but for so many people are going to hear this and be like wow this guy really downplays a top 20 at a grand tour i mean thinking about even being able to be good enough to be in a grand tour most of us are like, that would be incredible. Like, dude, top 20 <laughs> is, that was actually one of my questions I'm going to jump to. But um, it's interesting when you said you were disappointed to drop down to a pro Conti team. And without getting into like, you know, feel free to share whatever you want to share. What is that? What do pros think about that? World Tour versus Pro Conti. And the reason I ask that is because the levels of pro, when you said that you became, it was good for you as a cyclist to win the national championship. Was that more from how Americans saw you in cycling? Because a lot of Americans don't understand the different levels. And like, yeah, I'm curious how you guys look at it when you're in it. Um, can you talk, talk about that just a little bit? Yeah. So I guess, um, <clears throat> wait, sorry. What was the start? So of what's, question? well, yeah, sorry. I'm bad at asking multiple questions at once. Um, <laughs> pro Conti versus oh, yeah. world tour. Got it. Okay. How do so you guys see it? The reason I was like, uh, like disappointed was because like that year I was like, like the year before I was very good. I probably had had my best year so far, you know, like, um, problem was like, I had a small issue in the Giro. I had this, like, uh, I pinched a nerve in my hip and then like, I was out for a while. And, but then like when I had come back, I was really good. And I was like, um, I was like sixth on the clean stage of the tour of Poland. And I was like top 10 overall, which is like, a pretty big world tour race and so you know um i guess on my team i am cycling at the time like i was one of the best riders and so or you know i was in the top five riders on the team and like so if the team would have continued i wouldn't have had any problem mm -hmm. and then in the vuelta that year i was in a bunch of breakaways and like i was like really good i'd never got like a big result but like you know there was like some days where i was really close and like you know i don't know just the circumstances of the race didn't work out and like but I was probably one of the most active riders in, in the Vuelta, you know? And like, and everyone was like, holy shit, you know, you're doing this awesome Vuelta, you're doing a great race. And then, yeah. So for me, it was like, it was probably my best year yet. Um, and then to not, so like, I, I guess what I showed, like, I guess I felt like I was a very good world tour rider. Mm -hmm. And um, the problem was, it was just like my team folded, maybe another team folded and then there just weren't places. And then I almost didn't even get any team. Um, and it wasn't until like, I don't know, middle of October that aqua blue like worked out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. So then, you know, I was just like, this is a lot of things, you know, like I took a really big pay cut cause it was the only option I had. And, um, so it was just kind of like all those factors I was, you know, like, I just felt like I had, um, earned or deserved, you know, like mm -hmm. a good place in the world tour. And it was just kind of shocking. Like if it had been another year where I hadn't performed that well, I'd understand. But like, mm -hmm. you know, it was like my best year yet. That was what kind of shocked me. Um, but I guess in terms of like, you know, um, you know, world tour pro Conti, um, I guess everyone does think like, okay, world tour is here. Now there are some pro Conti teams that are seen almost like the same. Like now I think anyone would say like Alphacin is like at least, you know, is equivalent of being a world tour team. No one would see them any different to like another world tour team. But then there are like lower level pro Conti teams that, you know, I guess people wouldn't really want to ride for mostly because like, it's just not as good. It's not as professional as the setup. You don't have the same support, mm -hmm. probably don't have the same money, things like that. Um, so, and at the time aqua blue was new, no one knew anything. And in the end, it actually ended up being pretty sweet. Like <clears throat> it was a great team. 
um, while it lasted. Um, and like the first year, especially was really cool. Like we just, I don't know, everything like went our way. It went really well. We got into the Vuelta, you know, we did really cool races. Uh, you know, we had a sick kit, we had nice bikes, like everything just like, and, and we had a lot of really good, like former world tour riders. So actually like we had quite a lot of respect in the Peloton. So it was actually really nice because that's another thing. Like as a pro continental rider, you don't have the same respect in the Peloton and it's harder. You have to fight more. Like people don't just like let you in. Um, and so that was also another thing. Like when I won the national championships, it was like my respect in the Peloton, like, you know, it's like when you have that really? Jersey. Okay. Oh yeah. Like people would just like let me in. So like my teammates, you know, they would have this really hard time. And like, uh, but like me, because I had the Jersey was just like, I could go anywhere I wanted, you know, um, because everyone was like, Oh, this guy's actually, he, he's quite good, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, I think that's kind of like a thing and yeah, it's harder. But even now, like I, I would say, even I mean, it's a small thing, but even just having like the stripes on my sleeve, um, I would say I have more respect in the Peloton than if I didn't have that, which is kind of interesting. Um, so, so yeah. So the U S get some respect i always wondered like are we um, kind of a... i also think it depends i think it was also because like i had won stages in swiss before you know yeah. depends on the person um yeah. and like what other results you would have but like yeah. uh i think everyone would be like they knew like okay um yeah this guy it's just like it's like if you're wearing the green jersey okay okay tour de france is a different story but like if you're at any other race and you're wearing like a jersey you have more respect as in like you know a leader's jersey not just necessarily the yellow jersey but like you know if you have the young riders jersey or you have like the mountains jersey like you have a bit more respect people are going to let you in more mm -hmm. so like it actually makes a difference which is better giro or vuelta now you've done four and four right yeah um <sighs> giro is harder um well it might be more enjoyable um why is giro harder it's just like i think it's the hardest race in the world in terms of uh terrain you know like mm -hmm. uh the climbing um, is ridiculous yeah this year was like more humane than last year last year was just like, <laughs> seriously messed up um so yeah like uh there was some unreal days like i don't know at the, the last week of giro last year was the most tired I've ever been in my entire life. Like I was just like a walking zombie. You post some funny pictures on, uh, on Instagram where it was like sums up yesterday. And I can't remember when you'd post this, what race, but it's like you in rain gear. And you can yeah. tell the first picture, this is, like, this, this, is, this is hard. And it's like scroll, right? It's like kind of zoom scroll. Right, and you're just like, Bleh. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good to have a, a good sense of humor about that. Uh, being yeah. down from the race. What's, what's the biggest goal race? This year? And um, forever. Oh. Races you dream about. Well, I would like to do the tour one day. I've still not done the tour, so that would be, you know, a big goal of mine. Um, how does that then, work? How does that work of, like, how do you secure a spot on the roster besides just – Yeah, I mean, you just have to be well? very good. The problem is on my team, like, um, since it's a French team, French sponsor, they need to take, like, a certain amount of French guys. And then, you know, we have – um, in terms of the international guys we have now, we have like Van Averma, you know, Jungles, Nassen, uh, you know, it's like, it's not exactly easy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, cause now I would say, you know, there's maybe four spots for guys who aren't French, um, okay. in the best scenario. So, um, it makes it a bit more difficult, but yeah, essentially you just need to smash it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's it. You know, um, and then, yeah, I guess this year my goal races would be like, I'm really looking forward to Tour of Poland. Uh, I really would like to do a really good Tour of Poland. Um, it's a race I like. And then um, also like the Italian one days at the end of the year, like Lombardia, um, Emilia, those races, I'd really like to be really good there. So for those, I would say those are probably my two biggest goals the second part of the year. But I just really want to be – good the whole second part of the year um so right now yeah i'm at altitude for like three weeks to try to get ready that's awesome what's do you, is there anything that at this point in your career makes you a little anxious or nervous before big goal races just honestly now it's just like going to work mm -hmm. like it's like i don't have any 
the only time I'd maybe get nerves is like a really big race, you know, like liaise or um, maybe I'd feel like a little bit nervous before like a monument. Um, but like not much, you know, like I used to get way more nervous for like my local crit than I do now for like any of these races just because it's like, I mean, yeah, if you do 80 races a year, it's literally like showing up for work every day, you know? Mm-hmm. So. so last, uh, last questions, I guess we're coming up on an hour here. I don't want to take up too, too much more of your time. It's been incredible. Uh, a lot of people ask me to ask questions about equipment. I'm not a huge uh, equipment guy. Um, I'm definitely not up in the latest and greatest tech. So I think a general, general question is kind of what stands out about your setup or what do you think, what do you, are you into the tech side and does that all matter to you? What, how do you sort of see this? Yeah. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty very into it. <laughs> what are the most uh, important pieces to make you fly? Well, I would say like good tires are very, very important. Um, I would say like for me, tires are maybe one of the most important important things um and what then you, yeah so this what are you year, running and like what pressure because this okay. is actually- okay yeah. um well the thing is that we have pirelli um which is actually it's very good uh i wasn't sure like because in the past we'd had like victoria continental you know which are both like amazing but like this year like we've been on pirelli and it's it's awesome um so i've been really happy and so i've been running um like so now this year we, we have Campagnolo also, and like they made these new tubeless wheels, which are sick. They're called like WTO ultra something. Mm-hmm. And, um, so it's actually like, uh, so we have the option and I would say like on my team, 80% of guys use tubular still. Um, no and way. Oh yeah. Oh, I would say on mo in the pro peloton, I would say 80% of guys are on tubular still. I'm surprised um, was, I wouldn't have guessed that high, especially when there was like all these articles about like Tony Martin's doing time trials on clinchers. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying time trials. Time trials a lot. But yeah, yeah. I just thought it might like carry over at some point. People, you know, uh, I guess the only overnight. thing a lot of guys are really scared about like um, flatting at high speed, you know, mm-hmm. which I am also still a little bit scared about. Um, but I mean, now I think, you know, if you put a liner in or something, then maybe it's actually quite even a safer solution but um i don't think we have liners in anyway i just really like them i think our tubeless wheels and tire like combo is just really fast um so i i really like that we have like we race we've been racing mostly on the like pirelli um i think it's called the race tlr um okay. and then with this like bora ultra and like yeah for me that's super fast and then i have um at the Giro, I started to use the aero bike from BMC also, which is like a rocket. So, so I really like uh, on the flat days to ride the aero bike. It's, it's pretty heavy. So, um, I ride like the, whatever all around bike, on the, the, all the other days, but, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm really, I'm really digging the tubeless. Um, so for me, that's been quite a nice, um, is the low yeah, pressure a big uh oh yeah so the thing is is like i use pirelli has like a chart um and i just use their chart so for our wheels which is like the 19c internal rim width um for like a 26 uh tubular which is what we or sorry tubeless which is what we run i run um i run like 6.2 bar which uh i don't know what that is in um it's maybe like 80 something PSI bar to PSI is 89.9. Okay. So maybe I'd run like six in the front and then 6.2 in the back or something. And okay. they're just like way more comfy. Uh, and they're definitely faster on the flat on the climb. I'm not hundred percent sure still, but, but yeah. Okay. So that's something I really like. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's, there's not really anything that I have too crazy on my bike. But. Fair enough. Um, Last question for you, super open, open-ended. I realize there's no silver bullet, but best tip for cyclists coming up that are American, well, it doesn't have to be American, coming up, maybe trying to, you know, just get to their next level where they're trying to get to cat one. Maybe they're trying to make it a jump to low level pro. Looking back, was there anyone you, maybe a mentor that helped you out that just gave you a sage piece of advice that you still think of. That's like, man, I'm really glad I keep that in my back pocket. It kind of helps keep you centered on stuff. 
I mean, I don't know if there's maybe one piece of advice that I always follow, but like the one piece of advice that I would give is just like never stop having fun because like the moment you stop having fun at any level, there's no point in being a cyclist. It's too hard if you're not enjoying it. And um, so, you know, it's like, for me, I try to, I'm always trying to like ride with my friends and, you know, so like a lot of us pros, we all train together. Uh, Even, you know, we have like our specific workouts, but like we make an effort to all ride together and then we go to like a climb and then like, you know, we do our own workouts and then we ride together to the next climb and we do our, you know? Um, So I think it's always like trying to make sure like, you know, you're still enjoying it. Um, and yeah, I think, uh, cause the moment you just try to get like too crazy, if, you know, you just never ride with people, you're always alone. You try to do your specific everything. Like that's not fun. And, uh, quite, you're going to quickly burn out. So I think, you know, for me, it's really important to ride with people, to have fun. Um, and yeah, I guess just not forget that because the moment you do cycling sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Man, this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank this you. Phenomenal. Uh, wish you the best of luck this year. Tons of success. You'll have a lot of people rooting for you. And Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, man, really, really appreciate your time. And uh, no what's, what's next for you? Race wise? Um, San Sebastian is my next race. So okay. end of July and then Poland after that. So sick. Should be good. Yeah. Rip it up, man. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, man. Incredible. No worries. Talk to you later. Have a good one, dude. You too. Yeah. Larry, thanks again, man. That was awesome. Everybody, make sure you check out the full interview series with a ton of other amazing athletes that have just dropped an insane amount of knowledge for us to get inspired by, get better on the bike by. And I think a lot of these uh, gems are for off the bike too, finding happiness when we're not training and racing. So good luck with all your training, resting, racing, whatever you're doing this week. Talk to you soon. See ya.